Leveling in Returnal is unique in that a vast majority of the strength gained in a given cycle is immediately lost upon death. This includes things like stat augments, artifacts, parasites, proficiency, consumables, and obelites, aka money. There are, however, a handful of permanent benefits that I'll cover first. The most straightforward perk is that defeating any biome boss in a given cycle enables bypassing that boss in the future. Next are unlockable equipment upgrades that generally grant the ability to access new areas or empower your combat. While there are only 8 total upgrades, including 2 reserved for increasing the number of max consumables, getting access to new areas typically results in extra items or artifacts that can be the difference between surviving the next room or starting a brand new cycle. Last of the permanent upgrades are weapon traits. When picking up a weapon, it is randomly assigned a series of traits. The traits are permanently unlocked by killing enemies with the weapon. Each weapon has unique traits that can be leveled multiple times. Due to the time-consuming nature, it is generally wise to only unlock traits for weapons you enjoy. Also note that some traits are better than others, like the Portal Beam for the Hollow Seeker or Full Auto for the Rocket Launcher. You'll have to decide if you want to prioritize unlocking more traits for future runs or pick weapons with fully unlocked traits to go all in on your current playthrough. Note that until reaching the max proficiency of a given act, you'll likely be switching weapons somewhat frequently. The last permanent resource in Returnal is Ether. This useful substance can be used in a variety of ways, including cleansing malignant chests or items, creating a copied version of yourself at a reconstructor, scavenging an item from an astronaut corpse, unlocking items or artifacts at Thonos, being exchanged for obelites at a criminal rate at the obelite repository, or synergizing with artifacts that give bonuses per ether carried. While most will initially use ether to cleanse, as you complete more cycles, you might find the other applications preferable. I tend to save ether for either unlocking new artifacts at Thonos, exchanging for obelites, cleansing a healing item in a dire situation, or simply keeping it around to synergize with artifacts. Note that the max ether is 30 and thus should be used upon reaching that total. Before getting into the temporary items, let me first outline some devices. First are fabricators. These devices hold artifacts or stat augmentations typically available for purchase, although sometimes for free. The next device worth noting is the reconstructor. This will create a copy of you that will resurrect at the site upon death in exchange for ether. While it sounds like a good deal, one drawback is that dying at a boss after using consumables respawns you without them. Facing that same boss itemless is generally a hopeless prospect. For that reason, the Reconstructor is better leveraged as a pre-boss insurance policy that can be used to play more recklessly while preserving items pre-boss fight. Other helpful devices are Reclaimers. Reclaimers are stone looking beds that either glow red or green. The green inert reclaimers are great and simply grant additional max integrity and health regen. The red beds are double-edged and offer an item in exchange for potential health. While not always the case, red beds will typically drain at least some life, especially if you have a lot of it, and can provide useful artifacts or less useful consumables. You'll have to assess the risk given your unique circumstance. Another useful device is the Parasite Harvester. This can be used to randomly remove a parasite in exchange for obelites and is great for either A, getting rid of a parasite that sounded good at the time but is now regrettable, or B, converting a parasite that is kind of meh into useful obelites. The fourth device is the Damaged Fabricator. This device offers players a random consumable or artifact for the reasonable price of 75 obelites. However, after each use, the cost increases and becomes a greater gamble. For those not saving for a known item, it's generally worthwhile for the first roll, at least. Next on the list is the data cube processor. One data cube can be carried at a time, and dropping these off at the data cube processor unlocks an item or artifact for future runs. 
Moving on to the temporary upgrades, these are the items and or stats needed to boost strength and prepare for the biome bosses. Weapon proficiency is the first stat to cover and is primarily increased by killing enemies. This stat dictates the level of new weapons. Proficiency ranges from 0 to 15 in Act 1 and from 15 to 30 in Act 2. Weapons will either match your current proficiency level or can spawn up to 3 levels higher. Higher level weapons have additional stat points in damage and other class specific auxiliary stats. Unsurprisingly, they make killing enemies a lot easier and explain why guns are periodically exchanged throughout a given cycle. The next important category are artifacts. These range from phenomenal effects, such as instant resurrection upon death, to those that fall into the meh category. Some are particularly good if found early, like the resin enhancer that only requires two resin to increase health instead of three, and some, like the murmuring cocoon, go well with thematic builds, like those that focus on collecting parasites. You can carry up to 15 artifacts and can manually destroy any to make room for others. The next important category are stat augmentations. These simply boost your base level stats and come in the following categories. Weapon damage, how much damage you do. Protection, your resistance to enemy damage. Proficiency rate, how quickly you can acquire more powerful weapons. Repair efficiency, how much health items heal you. Alt fire cooldown, how long alt fire takes to recharge. And max integrity how much total health you have. As far as I can tell, these stats can be increased indefinitely, although not surprisingly, aren't cheap. In terms of what to prioritize, since dying has dire consequences, I'd say max integrity and protection should be on the top of the list. After that, repair efficiency and weapon damage make up the second tier, with alt cooldown and proficiency being least important. Consumables, like most things in the game, vary in number and value. These range from the critical large sylphium vials that heal the majority of even augmented health bars, to often useless shocking springs that do AoE damage where you jump, which, okay, but aren't I usually jumping away from enemies? You start with only one consumable slot, eventually reaching a total of three. Note that multiple versions of the same item fit in a singular slot and should be stockpiled if possible. Next is resin. Resin is one of two green sylphium items. Its function is to fill one of three slots that upon completion add an incremental amount of integrity to Selene's suit. The other sylphium item is health regeneration. It comes in minor, moderate, and the ever glorious large size. Note that regular sylphium turns into resin if you're already at full health, rewarding damage-free play. Parasites are the next critical non-permanent resource. They come with both a positive and negative effect and must be carefully considered based on your given situation and playstyle. For example, if you're someone who likes using melee attacks, then you want to avoid a parasite that reduces melee damage by 50%, whereas if you hardly ever melee, then it's probably worth picking up. If you're on the fence about a parasite, I'd recommend picking it up. This is because A, some artifacts give you bonuses based on how many parasites you're carrying, B, certain items let you recycle a given parasite, C, you'll occasionally come across parasite harvesters to let you exchange a random parasite for obelites an unlimited number of times, and D, they make your suit look kinda cool. Atropian keys, are another key item. They unlock rooms or chests that often contain an artifact or stat enhancer. While this isn't always the case, there will always be something of value in a locked room, and despite cycles being randomly generated, you will almost always find far fewer keys than places to use them. Another important returnal resource are obelites. These burst from slain enemies, can be found in small or large chunk form, and when playing online can be exchanged at obelite repositories for ether and vice versa. Obelites are used for purchasing artifacts and stat augmentations from fabricators. Similar to keys, the amount of obelites pales in comparison to the purchasable items, 
and thus are highly precious resources. The last resource to cover is weapon caliber, which increases weapon proficiency. Like Sylphium, caliber comes in three sizes that directly increase your proficiency a commensurate amount. Make sure to collect as many possible to help scale your weapon as the cycle progresses. The final element of leveling that needs to be covered are malignancies. Certain items in the game, such as chests, chunks of obelite, or Sylphium, can be colored purple, meaning that they are infected with a malignancy. Malignancies come in various severities that affect the probability of getting a malfunction when interacting with the infected item. Selene can only tolerate two malfunctions at a time, and upon receiving a third, will trigger a critical malfunction. Critical malfunctions will destroy either artifacts, keys, or one max resin slot. A destroyed artifact is the worst and most common result of critical malfunction, and thus should be avoided at all costs. Apart from the max number of malfunctions, each malfunction is assigned both a consequence and a required condition for removal. Both the consequences and conditions vary widely in severity. For instance, a malfunction might say alt fire cooldown increased 5 seconds, cleanse by opening a chest. These are both mild. It may also have your maximum integrity with the requirement of using an atropian key. This is both a serious consequence and something that requires both finding a key and a place to use it, and thus can take much longer to resolve. Certain parasites will also increase the frequency of encountering malignant items or increase the difficulty of their removal conditions when attached. On the flip side, certain artifacts will increase max HP, give extra damage, or recover health when gaining a malfunction, and thus certain builds can be malfunction-centric. Players must decide whether harvesting the malignant items is worth the risk on a case-by-case -case basis. Two general rules of thumb are, number one, Take a bit more risk at the start of your cycle, because dying early in a run is better than dying later. Number two, risking malfunctions on tangible rewards, like large obelite chunks, is smarter than risking them on unknown rewards, such as unopened chests.